All right, we're here in Vancouver, Washington with Dustin Snyder. Hey, how's it going? It's going pretty good. How are you guys doing, Neil? Doing great, doing great. Uh, we're here to check out your mobile office. I'm, I've got a little bit of truck envy. Um, you've got something cool here. Why don't you show us around a little bit? Yeah, this is the, uh, the 3M fall protection. This is our demonstration vehicle. We have 46 of these running around the United States and a little over 200 vehicles like this or with sprinter vans in different parts of the world. So we can cover every part of the world doing fall protection awareness, user instruction, getting out there and really getting down and dirty and gritty with the, uh, with the end users of this stuff. So this is my office. So let's kind of show you what we've got going on here. Yeah. We have all kinds of different neat things. We're carrying a lot of different uh, different products, so we can show, come on site, show people different sizes, different options, things that they might be needing, wanting, carrying lots of the different retractables, whether it's large retractables, small oh, this retractables, looks like fun. personal retractables. Different industries need things for re self-rescue or really nasty, corrosive, dirty environments like oil and gas, and sometimes even wind when it gets really nasty and dirty. <laughs> yeah, you guys service all kinds of industries. I mean... We do. There's not much that we don't service. And as, as 3M, nobody nobody in the world doesn't touch one of our products every single day. Yeah, as 3M, the sky really is the limit. The sky is the limit. <laughs> Everything we do on this truck is made, uh, made to train. Um, it's our daily, everyday driver going down the road. We really appreciate being part of you guys. Love the uh, the tower climb, climbing grease monkeys. Love yeah. The height. Um, well, thank you. Getting out here, seeing the wind uh, wind farms, uh, visiting the people. That's uh, that's been pretty cool. We've had a great reception from you know all the products that you gave us. So pe people are really like loving putting on the harnesses, the safety glasses. They really love those shades, uh, all the stop the drop tools. You know the, the tool lanyards and all that. Great reception from all that. Do you want to see the coolest part of this truck? Absolutely. But you got to answer a question for me first. Yeah. Look, look at the camera here. i got a serious question for you. Oh, boy. Here we go. What does safety mean to you? Why do you do this? Why do you care about the safety of these guys? And what does safety mean to you? Uh, for me, uh, this gets kind of real. I mean, I have a three-year-old daughter. And um, if I can't come home to her uh, with all of my fingers and toes and everything, then uh, I'm not doing it right. And I can't, you know, I think about it like this, like, I won't, I won't do anything that I won't, that I wouldn't ask her to do, you know? And if I don't feel like I'm comfortable doing it, then that's, that's where I cut the line. And so I think for me personally, I think about that family and wanting to come home and do that. For the guys out in the field, I know that they're, they're worried about the same thing and they're always worried about their brother, you know, next to them. Um, I don't know, does that answer your question? <laughs> it does. It's a lot of the same reason that we're doing what we're doing out here. It's really to make sure that every worker is going home safely every single day and that there's no reason to come to work and not be able to go home and enjoy what we do personally. We only go to work to make the money so we can go home and be with the people and do the <laughs> things we want to do. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's lighten it up. Let's show you guys what this truck is really capable of, what we can do, uh, do with this. Just like that, we've taken a normal vehicle and we've turned this into a, a training, awareness, uh, come on site and show people how things really work machine. I love it. <laughs> inside, inside, we carry a lot of products. We carry a 220 pound solid steel weight. And what we like to do is we like to come on site and show people what the forces are, what they can really expect if they're doing things incorrectly or if they're doing things correctly. And it's, it's pretty, pardon the pun, impactful on uh, what these guys are doing. So, do you, want, you guys want to see that? Yeah, absolutely. Let's see what goes on there. Now we got stuff coming out from everywhere. This is awesome. So what we've got here, What we got here is a lot of potential. <laughs> so we've 
got a 220 pound solid steel weight and we're going to do a drop on a four foot web restraint lanyard. This okay. is not a uh, fall protection lanyard. This isn't what you'd be using for fall protection. This is more what you'd be hooked up to to be kind of like a dog on a leash so that you can't actually get out to a fall hazard and you can't fall. So not something you'd normally fall on, but we want to show you what kind of forces are out there when you do something incorrectly. We've got a load cell hooked up to this. We've got it hooked to a uh, display in the back so we can actually read what the maximum forces are that we're going to be dropping on. So what do you think we're going to see? How much force do you think we're going to see just dropping 220 pounds? Or um, any guesses? Nope. I don't have any guesses. You don't have any guesses? Five, 500? 500 pounds? Yeah. Here, why don't you, uh, why don't you pull the lever and find out? Give us, <laughs> give us a three, two, one. All right. Three, two, one. Well, this definitely took the, took the brunt of it. <laughs> so we're at 4,188 pounds of force. Oh my goodness. Over two tons of force, just dropping 220 pounds, four feet. And what else happened to that when it hit the bottom? What it was, well. Oh man, all that recoil and like that bouncing. Bounced and it swung around. And every time that bounces, that's more and more force that's going into your body. At 4,100 pounds, well, consider that a semi-survivable fall. You're gonna have probably dislocated hips, broken pelvis, a lot of internal injuries, but really overall a really, really bad day. Yeah, that's a, that is a bad day. Let's show you what happens when we're doing things correctly. So this time we're gonna use the same weight. We're gonna go the same distance. This time we're gonna use a, a normal fall arrest lanyard like you're, no, like you're used to that has a shock, shock absorber in it. Yeah. What do you think that's going to change in the system? How do you think that's gonna change that, what goes on here? Uh, maybe by half. By half, so about 22,000 pounds, somewhere in there? Yeah, that's a guess. A guess? <laughs> oh yeah. We're not done yet. We're gonna go. We're gonna take this train higher, <laughs> we're gonna, higher baby. We're gonna go higher, huh? <laughs> well, what did we say? The sky is the limit. So <laughs> go ahead and grab that uh, cord again and give us a three, two, one count. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> That was very smooth. What was different about that? Yeah, there was none of that bouncing, you know, none of that, you know, jarring around and hitting multiple times, and it was actually fairly smooth. Didn't bounce, didn't swing. Looked like something would be fun to do, like that I have this at the fair, wow. harness kids up, kick them off a of scaffolding. Yeah, this is well, it's, that had some serious energy, because that's warm. Maybe it wasn't quite that nice. And what was our force down to? Take a look and read that and tell me what our force was down to. 771 pounds. So remember, in fall arrest, anytime wow. we're working in fall arrest in the U.S., we have to get the maximum fall arrest forces down to less than 1,800 pounds. According to ANSI, on a normal Force 1 lanyard, we have to get the average, or what the body's going to feel, down to less than 900 pounds, and on your Force 2, which is what you use a lot in wind energy, down to less than 1,350 pounds. So, much less, a lot, lot more survivable, a lot less likely to do damage. Now inside that sleeve, the webbing that's in there, this, that energy absorber is made up of two pieces of webbing. These oh, are wow. woven together, they're made to start ripping out at about 600 pounds and then continue ripping out until the forces come down to zero. Now let's say you were doing something wrong, you were taking greater than the allowed free fall or you were over the capacity of what the lanyards are made to handle and you were able to rip all the way through this thing. These are only gonna rip out to a solid piece of webbing and even fully deployed through the testing that we have to do, we pull test these to 5,000 pounds and they still have to maintain that overall 5,000 pound integrity for a certain amount of time. So these are built really, really well. They're built in Red Wing, Minnesota by American workers. I've never actually seen one of these deployed. That was really cool. And you said this is 250 pounds. 220 pounds. 220 pounds. That, that, takes, that represents the average uh, about a 300 and about a about a 300 pound worker. 220 pound weight is going to give us about a 290 to 300 pound worker taking a fall. 
Wow. A couple other things that a lot of people don't understand about fall protection. Bring this down for a minute. I'll tell you what, I've got, I've got a great, uh, great offer for you. Okay. I'm gonna take this, and if you can finish tearing this apart for me with your bare hands, I'll give you whatever cat, whatever harness you want out of our catalog. Go ahead and grab that up, finish tearing that apart for me. How am I gonna do that? <laughs> <laughs> I saw it done once. I saw a guy on a job site, we were on a construction site, it was a guy who was about this tall, <clears throat> he was about this wide, and he was wearing a kilt on a construction site. Nobody gave him any hard time about the kilt, but nobody would work underneath him. They didn't want to look up for some reason. Yeah, I don't got that. Yeah, they're probably not going to happen. <laughs> so when we talked about your lanyards, we, we drop tested them, we showed you what kind of forces are involved in your lanyards. But have you ever seen what the clearances are, how much distance you really need, and how these things work and play out? I don't know, I just know six feet is like the magic number. Six feet's the magic number? Yeah. For what? For like, you need, you, for if to put one on, you basically, if you're six above six foot, you put one of those on. So six foot's your trigger height. If you're over six feet off of something, depending on industry, you've got to be wearing one. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a pretty good number. But there's a couple other numbers people need to realize too. And this is a normal lanyard. This isn't one of your lanyards that you're going to use and win. It's just a normal everyday industry lanyard. The numbers are going to be pretty close to the same that we're going to talk about. Okay. So we got a guy, we're hooked up on our anchor point, got our lanyard on our back, and we take a fall. How much uh, free fall do we have here? How far is this going to fall? Uh, I don't know. It's, it looks about six foot. Six foot. Six and then foot you got right. whatever pops out of here. We've so got four feet of energy absorber in there. Yeah. Okay. Your so body, we got about ten feet. And... About ten feet. Your body's going to then conform into that harness. Have you ever been lifted up in your harness? Yeah, absolutely. So that back D ring slides up about a foot. Yeah. Takes us up to eleven feet. Then we have the original distance from the middle of your back down to your toes because you're hanging off of this thing. Remember. Probably about another five feet. Huh. Takes us up to about six, 16 feet. Okay. And then we have a safety buffer because we want to make sure that if there's anything below us or we didn't calculate quite correctly, we've got to have a safety buffer of about a foot and a half. So using a standard six foot lanyard like that, we could need 17 and a half feet of clearance below our anchor point to keep from hitting the ground. Really? Now wow. You guys, how far are you guys working up on these uh, towers? Uh, 300 feet. You know, 280, 340 feet to the top of the nacelle sometimes. Yep. You've got way more than 17 and a half feet of clearance. So yeah. why are we worried about this sort of thing? Why do we care about clearance? I don't know. Maybe working inside of the tower. Inside of the tower is a great, uh, great reason. Working uh, in around the generators, working in around the gearboxes, or just uh, above or below a, a, a rest platform, one of the platforms. The other big reason is if I'm hooked off on this thing now, so this is, uh, this is me hanging clear down here. Think about my rescue. How much further off of that nacelle now I'm gonna be hanging if everything goes wrong and I've maxed this thing out. Yeah, how am I gonna get to you? How am I gonna get to you? What am <laughs> I going to do? How am I gonna rescue somebody? That's the part we've really gotta think about is what are we gonna do for that rescue? Because I'm not gonna be six inches down below that uh, side of that nacelle. I could be a long ways down there. So we've come up with a lot of different solutions, and these kind of solutions have been around for a long time. We've got, you know, lanyards. You've, you've seen these lanyards. This lanyard's been around for quite a while. Yeah. And the way that that works, what's different about that, because I'm going to be hanging, hanging out here now with a Force 2 lanyard. It could be up to 18 and a half feet, because there's a little bit more room for the energy absorber. So in order to do that rescue and not have to get clear the heck down there, you've got the rescue rings in here. Yeah. We can reach down. We don't have to go as far. We can grab on with our Rogueless R550 rescue device, pull them up, disconnect, and then lower the worker down and perform our rescue that way. So it's, it's all about not having to put the second person at risk. Yeah, this was rescue. a game changer because I remember back in the day, you used to have some weird rope grab thing, that, and that just didn't work out all that well. Had to do all those rope grabs. Yeah, that was, that was, that was rough. Yeah, I think you gave these to us uh, on the tour, and we're, we're showing people. So... This one, uh, this particular one is globally certified. It can be in the, used in the US, parts of Canada, Europe. It's one of the ones that a traveling technician can really, really go around and use in a lot of different places. Yeah. So Neil, what's the first thing you do with your harness before you use it? Uh, I try to inspect it before, you know, head up tower. Try to inspect it? Yeah. It's absolutely, the first thing we want to do with any of your fall protection is inspect it before you go to use it. It's really simple, check it out, look for any cuts, rips, tears, frays, burns, chemical burns on it. Make sure there's no 
rust pitting or corrosion on any of the hardware, that you don't have any broken loose or missing stitches anywhere, make sure it's in really good shape. Because remember, this stuff is your life insurance policy. This is what's standing between the anchor point yep. and the ground. And <laughs> if this isn't there, there's not much between the anchor point and the ground. And that ground gets really hard really fast. It's yeah. a good thing. So we want to make sure we inspect our equipment really well prior to each use. You got a lot of stuff on that harness. You got a lot of stuff on it. Let's talk about the second thing you want to inspect before you put your harness on. Okay. You. You want to check you out before you put your harness on. Check all your pockets. Make sure you don't have any keys, pens, pencils in your pockets. Anything yeah. Anything that's going to get between the webbing and your body. And if you, let's say that's that, uncomfortable. That, that 700 pounds of force that we saw, what if you had that key sitting between the leg strap and you Ooh. put 700 pounds of force on that? I'd probably cut an artery or something. Probably not, not going to feel real good, is it? It's no. probably going to be a bad day. So get everything out of your pockets. Get your harness situated so it's comfortable around your shoulder blade. If you're wearing the type of harness that has the back pad on it, some guys prefer that, some guys don't. It kind of varies. Make sure you get that done up so it's in the right location. And then start with your leg straps. Get your leg straps done up. I like how you did that. I always do the weird little, like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's one of the neat little tricks I like to show people. Yeah, you kind of. When I lean down, if I lean down, you can't, your butt kind of pushes that leg yeah. the way it's hard to get to. So step forward, then it's easy to grab that leg strap and you can put it on. Quick and, and easy. Like. Get it put together real easy. Now, you've been around the wind industry a long time, right? Yeah. Have you ever seen guys out there working and they're climbing and they've got their leg straps dangling loose? Yeah, I always kind of veer away from that because I don't want any bad stuff happening down there. Yeah, not going to be a real good thing, right? So, you know, you take a fall like this, these leg straps loose, that, you fall, that harness stops, well, and your body's going to keep falling through this harness until these leg straps come up and they stop really suddenly someplace where you don't want leg straps <laughs> stopping quickly yet. Yeah. <laughs> and as they come up, you know, that's, that's not going to be comfortable. So we want these leg straps always starting out in the same location that they're going to end up in. And a lot of guys complain about how do they adjust their leg straps. They grab onto these, and they're pulling them down really hard like this. These are really easy to adjust. You just take the buckle, move it up a little bit, just like that. Okay. There's a sweet spot in there that'll let you just pull that down and get that tension to the proper, proper tension. There you go. Really quick, really simple, really easy. Wow, there it is. If you can get your hand underneath them, but you can't make a fist, then you have your leg straps done up properly. Yep. Your chest strap, in wind energy, your chest strap is pretty much situated where it's going to be. It's a fixed uh, fixed chest strap. It's not gonna go up and down very well. We wanna check the body of the harness. We don't need the body of the harness tightened down so tight. We can't stand up, we're all hunched over. It's pulling around the back of your neck real bad. Every time you pull, lean down, it's pulling on you. Yeah, that's uncomfortable. No, we wanna be able to work. We wanna be able to climb the way we need to climb, do the things that we need to do but keep the harness on you. And that was a quick and easy step. You just pulled that right out and there was it. So, yeah, the, nice. This is the ExoFit next with the revolver adjusters. You just ro rotate those up. They lock in place. They don't slip slip anywhere on you. Nice. Back D-ring needs to be located between your shoulder blades in the middle of your back. And this sub-pelvic strap down here, that needs to be below your butt so that if you take a fall, that kind of creates a little bit of a cradle, puts that uh, force through the biggest muscles that we have on our body. And, distributes that around there instead of it all going right into your leg straps. Oh, huh? what? I, I never knew that. I just thought it was kind of my little tail, you know? I thought, thought, thought it was there for fun, <laughs> something, something to drag off you yeah. going down the, down the tower. <laughs> That's what a lot of people think. You're, you're taking a look at some of the stuff I have on here. I kind yeah, of, I'm I, eyeing it. I look like the, I look like the uh, local junk man kind of wan wandering around with all my stuff on here. Or Batman or something. <laughs> so harnesses, lanyards, uh, rescue devices, anchor points. What is that fall protection for? What does that protect? Uh, us, you know, so we don't protect. get knocked out or protect killed. You, or, right? Yeah. Protect you as the worker. All uh -huh. that stuff is about keeping you from hitting the ground. Yeah. But we have a lot of other things that we have to worry about hitting the ground as well. We've got all the tools that we're carrying, everything that we've got on us, not only falling and hitting somebody that might be coming up below us, Yeah. but there are a lot of things in these towers and just outside of these towers that don't react well to heavy things hitting them. Yeah, trucks. Trucks, transformers. Oh, yeah. Cable trays. Yeah. yeah. I can imagine that. I've seen some of that. That's bad. Some of that can be bad stuff. So there's a lot of different ways to actually take care of your tools. And it doesn't mean being spiderwebbed all over you with a ton of, ton of different things. It can be... It can be as simple as having... These rated split rings. These are split rings that can go on your end wrenches, your offset sockets, 
so I can use either side of that wrench and oh, yeah, that's nice. are working. We have a lot of different holsters and it, and it varies from industry to industry what's going to work best for them, but this particular one has retractors on it, magnets so I can hold it here, I can work hands free and just grab my tools when I actually need them instead of having to holster them every single time I'm, I'm using them. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, and it comes with two, comes so you can two. put multiple. And they're replaceable if they wear out and you need to put another one in there. These are pretty neat. Yeah. Have you ever tried to put a uh, tether on a screwdriver? Uh, one time, and it didn't work out all that did, well. Did it wrap up when you tried to use it, and it tangled up and kept getting shorter and shorter? Yeah, I put, like, tape on it, and it didn't work out all yeah, that good. It never works well. So these are kind of like that Chinese finger grip that you give kids who <laughs> can't get their fingers apart. Exactly. They come in different sizes. <laughs> They rotate and spin, so we can put them right on the ends of tools. Let's that tool rotate and spin. Nice. We use that a lot of times with a short little lanyard so they don't have a lot hanging off of me. And this goes on a little breakaway, pull-away wrist anchor that, I, that we have. So that's right there with you. You've got your tools right there. Yeah, I think you gave me some of those. The guys really like that. When you're working out of some of the buckets, I know you guys have been looking at a lot of different buckets that are out there. There's a lot of great, great buckets for wind energy. Um, you know, I think you've got the last U.S. bag company on your on your truck. They make some, they make oh, some yeah. great buckets, too. You can actually work out of those uh, out of those buckets and have your tools in there. Reach in, grab the tool that you need, tether it off instead of having to have everything scattered around you or sitting sitting all over the place. It's a, it works really well. These same solutions also work good for pliers because they come in different sizes, so I can put my pliers on. Oh yeah, look at that! I've never I've never figured out a way to get these tied off ever. That's awesome. What's your number one drop tool in wind? What's, what's the thing you see drop more than anything else? A radio. Radios and cell, cell phones. phones. So Communication devices. Just ugh. The new, uh, the new ExoFit uh, Nex wind energy harnesses come with our fall protection for tools radio holsters on them. Oh, cool. And this has a little tether that can go on the back of the radio or cell phone because if I'm pulling it out and I'm talking on it, and then I drop it. Whoopsie. I don't want that going all the way down. Those are expensive. It, uh, it's not a good thing. Yeah. So yeah, it's not too smart after you drop it. So we want to keep these on our body, keep them from falling, really, uh, really help with things. That's a, that's a great, a great addition to the harness. Absolutely. You were talking, uh, you know, we were we were out. You were saying, hey, what does some of this stuff do? And one of the tools that you have that's heavy, and if you drop it, is going to cause a lot of damage. Is what? Uh, an E-Rat. An E-Rat. And so. Well, who's one of your sponsors? e rat e rat So you just happen <laughs> to have an E-Rat sitting here. Yeah, absolutely. Really cool. So. With the E-Rat, and I'd never really seen or played or touched one of these before, and I pulled this thing out, and my goodness, this is like pulling out a uh, an assault an assault weapon. Yeah, you're ready to go. <laughs> I'm ready to go to war with this. And talk about going to war. Drop one of these down a tower, hit something. Yeah. You know, you've gone to war, right? Yeah, and you're pretty much worried that you're going to get fired afterward too. And it's heavy. <laughs> this is way more than uh, way more than five pounds because we don't want to tie anything more than five pounds onto our body. That makes sense. If we have that, it could throw us off balance. It could start ripping stitching, so it's a bad thing. This is, I don't know, 10, 15 pounds, 20 pounds, maybe something like that. Yeah, that's a stout, durable um, torque gun. So, you know, you know, putting black tape, electrical tape on here with something's not going to work real well. Yeah. So we have different ways of doing that, and this is one of our cinch-on uh, anchor points. We don't want to put tape on here. We don't want to rely on that. So what we're going to rely on is the actual cinch itself to hold that tool so I can hold that tool with a cinch. Now I don't nice. want this tool this just sitting here because what happens if it gets up here and I pull on it. And then you react it's like going it's or go and it's not gonna not gonna be real cool. Yeah. <laughs> so it's spinning while it's hanging or so who knows. I'm going to look at this and I'm going to position this little th this little uh, device right here, this little channel so that it's gonna be on the tool in the right location. Oh okay going to hold that tool out of the way and then all I do is take some of my 3M fall protections for tools quick wrap tape this is a is a fiberglass reinforced silicone self vulcanizing tape that's a mouthful three times fast yeah I, I don't know you just take a take a couple feet of that cut it off why don't you go ahead and peel the end off of that be careful tell me how sticky that stuff is the vulcanizing tape. The self-vulcanizing <laughs> tape. Magic tape, as I like to call it. It's, it's not even it's not sticky, is it? Oh, it's self-vulcanizing. Self-vulcanizing. <laughs> so I've, you've never done this before, have you? Go ahead and peel that all the way off. Get rid of that. 
Okay. Throw it on the ground. Yeah. There you go. What I want you to do is I want you to take that tape and wrap it around the handle and around just like that. Okay. Pull it tight. Stretch that a little bit as you go. Okay. That stretching is what's really going to activate that tape and make it stick to itself. Make sure you come back on it. All right. Do I get this top part here? Nope. We can leave that top part. That's a channel so that it's not going to slide out. Oh, I got it. Wow, and it just stays like that. There we go. That was quick nothing, and easy. And there's nothing sticky on your hands. Or I bet on the you you could do that with gloves on. Do that with gloves on. Now we've got that t got that put on. It's not going to slide up. It's not in my way. I have full use of it. But just like we do with fall protection, I've created an anchor point now. This is my harness for my tool. Yeah. Now I need an anchor point, and I need a lanyard that's going to go between them. So I'm going to grab a lanyard, not just any old lanyard. We need a lanyard that's going to let us actually get out there and work in the places that we need to work. We said we don't tie anything higher than five pounds onto our body. So I'm going to take this 35 pound rated lanyard, I'm going to choke it onto the tool. And now I can find a, find a suitable anchor point for this. It could be a, a, a beam strap around a, a parts of the ladder rail. It could be another certified anchor point, but I'm just going to tie the tool off. And now I've got that tool. I can be up there on the yaw deck. I can be going around. I can be moving. I have lots of, lots of area that I can move around to. But if I drop the tool, if it gets knocked off, I've got this tool protected. Saving can save a lot of money and a lot of. Uh, I can see that being used for sure when we're outside torquing those uh, bearing to hub bolts. That's a, uh, yeah, because you're so worried about dropping that thing. You know, nobody wants to drop that, and this is a great resolution to it. I like this a lot. You know, it's better than just connecting onto some part of the smaller housing. It's 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 to the body of it thing right here on the handle, and it makes it pretty easy to actually hold on to. Still, like you got a good grip on there. That's a great that's a great uh, invention you guys got that. So these are just a few of the systems that are out there, a few of the solutions. There's a lot of different stuff that we do. We want to make it easy for you. We don't want to make fall protection for tools a real challenge or a real hassle when you're using it. Yeah, this is a nice beaner too. Everything is just like the carabiners that you use for fall protection for you. They're all a double action, self-closing, self-locking carabiner. So Dustin, you showed us a ton of stuff and I really like your truck. I had Truck Envy early on and now I really got it. This guy's got a transformer truck. I want to get a transformer truck. The fact is, you guys have been sponsoring our tour and you've been great supporters of us and I really appreciate that. But where can these guys find all this stuff? You can get, uh, get our products. You can look on our website at 3m.com forward slash fall protection. There you can find the different solutions. Like I said, we have 46 of these trucks running around the country, so you can always wow, get a hold 46. of 46. You can get a hold of a local representative anywhere you want to. I'm the wind energy uh, specialist for North America for the company. I've been dealing with wind farms for a lot of years, so I'm kind of the guy that they go to for that. But we have different specialists from all over the country, and any of our distributors, any of the distributors that you're getting your local safety supplies through, can help you with your fall protection, uh, fall protection for you and your fall protection for tool solutions. Well, thank you very much for hey, showing us all this stuff. Thank you very much, and thanks for going out there and doing this and helping keep the workers safe. Absolutely.